Nook, home of Penny Slate Designs. I'm Colette and today I'm going to demonstrate my patented press and peel applique. Are you ready? You're going to love it. Let's get started. Well today we're going to be working on the Daffodil Designer Packs. Designer Packs are specific designs that a creative person can use on clothing, home items, valances, and quilt blocks, obviously. Penny Slate Designs also publishes full quilt patterns with complete instructions for the entire quilts. Um, they range from table toppers, table runners, purses, king size quilts, and everything in between. Um, you can click the link below to get a good look at all the different patterns that we have, um, but you're going to love the process. When you're ready to start your press and peel applique, you will need the following items. Obviously, your pattern. And every pattern comes with a pattern sheet. And every pattern comes with this reusable release guide. This release guide can be used up to 300 times, probably more than you'll ever want to do in your lifetime. You will also need a pencil to trace a stylus, scissors, dressmaker's tracing paper, wax free please, and the fusible, um, I prefer Heat and Bond Feather Light. They have a light product, there's seam a seam, there's many products on the market, but you will need a paper backed fusible web. To begin your press and peel applique, uh, you get your pattern sheet. And I have it on a harder surface here, this little piece of cardstock. And you get your fusible bond paper, and I'm using, like I said, featherweight, heat and bond. And you just trace your design. And what you need to do and include when you're doing this, and I would take my time on this, you don't need to rush, is you want to include the dash lines, because that's going to help you place your piece, pieces. And also, as an alternate way of doing this, there is a product on the market called Print and Fuse. You can also print, rather than trace, you can print this from your printer. Now that I've got this all traced, I'm going to cut the patterns out. And a good thing to do when you get ready is I cut these apart about a little bit over, um, maybe an eighth to a quarter inch, like a rough cut, I call it. Just to leave a little lip. When I get ready to fuse my patterns onto the fabric, the first thing I do is I lay my pattern pieces out in number order or sometimes I'll do it by color if there are like lots and lots of pieces um, and this way it's just a little bit easier to handle. Also, please remember um, to always fuse onto the wrong side of your fabric when you're putting your pattern and fusing your pattern pieces on. So right now I will fuse my pale yellow parts onto the pale, wrong side of the pale yellow fabric. Make sure that it's fused on, but you do not want to burn off the adhesive. And you will look at your manufacturing factors um, instructions for the proper temperature. Now that we've fused all our pattern pieces onto the wrong side of the correct fabric, now, um, a lot of the designs ha come, and a lot of patterns come with this dashed line, and that helps you place uh, the pattern pieces in correct order. So, all I do is I'm going to take it, put the, the fabric side down onto 
the um, dressmaker's tracing paper side up okay and don't lean on it too much but just do with your stylus just trace those dashed lines or a couple of them you probably don't even need to do all of them it just helps in the placement so now that we have our dashed lines traced our patterns fused now we just cut out on the solid line of every piece if you have a scan and cut this is really cool to do on a scan and cut because you can basically set it go make a cup of tea come back and all your pattern pieces are already cut which is really really nice especially if you do more than one okay uh, now that I have cut all my pattern pieces out and it is really nice to see them with the fabric up but I'm going to turn them over so that I can see the numbers because that's the important part right now you'll notice that there are corresponding numbers on the release guide as well and also always remember that the correct side of this release guide you can see the numbers correctly they're not backwards okay so right now um, I see my number one is right here and this is pattern one I'm going to peel the paper off and I'm going to lay it in the position and you can see where the dash lines meet the other part and real quick I'm just going to tack in place I mean really a little just a little tack now pattern piece two same thing use your outer lines as a guide and your dash lines What's really nice about this, or one of the nice things about this, is if you get have children, the phone rings, you get interrupted and you leave it, um, you can sneeze or have a hurricane and none of these pieces are going to move. And this is number three. Number four. Oh, fingers. I really like that two people could sit here and work on the same thing and have two totally oh. different. You mean with the fabrics that and they use? results? Oh yeah, with the fabric they use. It's really fun to teach classes and to see um, all the different viewpoints that everybody has because not everybody sees the world like right. I do. Number five. This is a really pretty design. I love daffodils and they're just starting to bloom at my house. Six. I feel like if you have been afraid to try applique, this is a really easy process that lets you um, be creative. Mm -hmm. Get your feet wet. If you're wet. not artistic, but you want to be creative. Mm -hmm. this is a great process and finally number seven another good thing about using this release guide is that your pattern pieces only overlap a very little um, just a, a you can see right here just a little bit which keeps your design from getting really super stiff all right now that I have everything in place I just hit it one more time with the iron to make sure everybody's good and fused and now I'm gonna let it cool okay so now that we have assembled our pattern pieces on the release guide and I have given it plenty of time to cool the fun part is to peel it off that simple now I have a completely fused design and with the adhesive on the back and now I'm going to pretend that this is a quilt block and I'm getting ready to place it on I put it where I want it to be and again just hit it with the iron and get everything nice and fused in place and you are my dear are finished your press and peel applique 
queen daffodil is finished. Stay tuned for the second part of the video where we'll demonstrate and give you pointers on needle size, thread weight, and doing the actual stitching around your design. Thank you.